Dr. Santosh Kumar, Assistant Professor, Jesus Medical College, and from the Unit of Professor S. Lakshmi Narayana. This is an interesting case of this middle aged manual laborer who has six months history of polyurea, frequent nocturia, generalized fatigue, and class 2 dyspnea with occasional episodes of cleanliness. For this complaint, he has uh, consulted many local practitioners and also nearby medical colleges, and for which he was prescribed some antibiotics and bronchodilators. Thus, a detailed uh, history was elicited. There was no other helpful proofs. The patient was an alcoholic, he consumed once or twice a month. There is no past history of any chronic illness or chronic medications. At this level, take a few diagnoses in our mind, maybe diabetes or ischemic heart disease, anemia, UTI, prostate megaly, hypercalcemia, or even additions. We started examination. The patient has a dark complexion and his BMI was around 29, so he is overweight. And his vitals are in normal. The systemic examination, apical impulse, cardiovascular system, this apical impulse was in the left intercostal space, in the mid-flagular line, and in the mitral area, S1, S2 here, a doubtful mid-diastolic murmur was here, and passion was put in the left lateral position. After a little bit of exercise, a clear metastatic murmur with a pre-systolic accentuation was well made out. There was no opening snap or any other murmurs. <coughs> the other part of the precardium was completely normal. Other system examination, there was occasional bronchite bilaterally for the chest. And GIT and CNS were clinically normal, bones and joints are also normal. We proceeded with the investigations. This complete blood count normal and uh, patient has 2 plus urine sugar, CSR, HIV, hepatitis B status were negative. His fasting blood sugar was 126, postprandial 248, HbA1c 7.6%. Screenal function tests were normal, lipid profile were was within the normal limits. Liver function test also with the normal limits. Ultrasound abdomen, press no prostate megaly, normal study. His thyroid profile is also normal, his uh, patient was a bit obese, overweight. CRP room diet factor was negative, his serum electrolytes were with the normal limits, including calcium and free calcium. This is ECG picture, it showed a sinus rhythm. Around 75 per minute with the left lateral enlargement, there was no ischemia. This is the X-ray chest, shows the straightening of the left heart border, the prominent pulmonary artery and the left atrial appendage. So send the patient for the echocardiogram and it this is a four chamber view. You can see Mitral valve calcification. This is the Hawkins six sign, the calcification of the anterior mitral leaflet. This is the echo report. It comes as mild to moderate calcific mitral stenosis with mitral wall area around 1.5 cm square. There was trivial mitral regurgitation and aortic stenosis. There was gross left atrial enlargement. The diameter about 4.8 cm against 3.5 cm. The ejection fraction was good, in fact, more than normal 75%. The syncretic septum and the ventricular septum are all intact. There is no evidence of flat pericardial effusion or aneurysm or coarctation. So, the final diagnosis of our case is diabetes mellitus, calcific mitral stenosis, probably not non traumatic, and patient is currently under. Oral hypoglycemic agents 
and a low dose of AC inhibitor. Some non rheumatic causes of mitosinosis can be congenital, can be called as a parachute metal wall. There will be single papillary muscle and other causes are infected diabetes. Usually, it will present with a vegetation. A large vegetation can produce a mitosinosis like picture. The neoplasm, usually, the most common neoplasm which can mimic mitosinosis can be lactatal myxoma, but the ESR will be elevated in our patient is normal. And uh, there will be a classical history of platypnea, such history is not present in our present. The SLE, SLE can present as varicose vegetations for both sides of the walls, but it uh, present, present most, mostly with a regression lesion rather than a stenotic lesion. And carcinoids, therapy with methysogen and mucopolysaccharidosis like Hunter's Curlus, Fabry syndrome, they usually present with uh, mental retardation and uh, presentation will be in the early part of their life and rheumatoid arthritis. In our case, it may be probably a massive analog classification which has not, pro which has not uh, progressed up to the involvement of the <coughs> cardiac endocrine, probably a mitral annular classification. The reason for this presentation is the importance of proper clinical examination because patient has a six months history and uh, he was prescribed some antibiotics only. <coughs> and this is an unusual case of microstenosis, an asymptomatic patient, 50 years of age. Any questions from the audience? If there are no questions, thank you very much. Sir. Would you like to say something? First of all, I thank the organizer for giving me an opportunity in the last minute for improving the case. Uh, it's a very simple case. Whenever we see Michael's noses, we always dub it as rheumatic in our uh, situation. But this man had the, the cardiac uh, events late in the age, at the age of 50 years. Sometimes rheumatic also can present a late, but there no history of rheumatic fever at all in his early childhood to his remembrance. So we thought we are dealing with a case of uh, non-rheumatic uh, mitosinosis. With this idea, we, we did uh, uh, echo and it confirmed that it is an annular calcification which is causing the mitral stenosis. One is, as the presenter said, is a bit unusual cause, that's why we presented. Another is, we want to stress the clinical examination of the patient. This patient has gone to some medical colleges, nearby medical colleges. In spite of that, the case has been missed in the last six months. Now, the last six months is the time he had all the symptoms. So, even though we have so many gadgets, so many uh, instruments to diagnose, our clinical examination, suspicion of it, and sending the patient for proper investigation is more important. That's what I wanted to stress. Thank you very much. Sir, why you are given AC inhibitor in this case when it's not hypertensive? In one literature I read, in mitral stenosis it is contraindicated. If at all it is to be given, it is to be given very, very carefully. And patients should be observed every month. So, you can prevent a correct remodeling. So, you could have given diabetes. So, the patient was in cardiac failure. Cardiac, cardiac failure. Oh, you did not know. Did you have seen the last result? Start with this. Of uh, polyuria mm -hmm. and uh, 
and uh, generally speaking, he suspected Addison's disease in the history level. So, patient also got dark complexion. So, he suspected Addison's disease, but the urine specific gravity was pretty normal, and there was no uh, hyperkalemia. Electrolytes are no. Electrolytes are also normal. Thank you. Mitochondrial anal calcification produces only mitochondrial degradation, not mitochondrial disease. If you say that LA appendage is enlarged, that is characteristic of traumatic fever affecting the LA appendage. No other condition, pulmonary disease, will produce an LA appendage. If it is a mitochondrial it is traumatic. The what is there is no such an entity called non-traumatic mitochondrial The problem comes only when we deal with mitochondrial disease. If only in mitral regurgitation you can have a rheumatic and non-rheumatic mitral regurgitation. Mitral stenosis always rheumatic. So the first textbook of cardiology has given the whatever the uh, list has been given as causes of rheumatic so causes of mitral stenosis. In that rheumatic fear is one of the causes. All other are not rheumatic causes. I don't know why you are telling the no other than uh, no cause other than rheumatic for mitral stenosis. See the pathophysiology of mitral stenosis in rheumatic fever is either the primary orifice is affected or the secondary orifice of the cardiac region they are affected. It is the fusion of the commission. Fusion of the commission simply does not occur in any other pathophysiology. SLE can produce varicose endocarditis, it produces only mitral regurgitation, not mitral stenosis. I don't know. You are challenging a uh, host uh, textbook no, of cardiology. I am not competent to <laughs> compete with you. Dr. Krishnamurti. I know Dr. Krishnamurti. Yes. Yes. But, yes. but, yes. but yes. Uh, it has been quoted from Hust. Yes. I don't it think any other uh, uh, any other reference you want. It is rheumatic. There is no such a thing called non rheumatic. Mitral stenosis occurs only in uh, rheumatic heart disease and congenital heart disease, not in other causes. Then what is that? So many causes given. How you are challenging this? There is an entity, sir, non rheumatic heart disease. Are you saying, I you, you write a husk no, and ask them to remove it all other is causes? Being, it is being taught. <laughs> it is being taught. Is being taught. So many, right? Please write a husk, the latest book. It is being taught, a non rheumatic uh, microscope. Yes, it is already entity is there. I've gone through some of the conference also, they have presented papers, <coughs> non rheumatic because of calcification, testing on the cardiac, and the, this. Uh, it's not dilating, forming a pseudostenosis. Not necessarily are organic stenosis, function stenosis, causing my no. and, and also what is the, and uh, the, uh, what is the surface and area of the mind? Uh, 1.25 square centimeter. So that again confirms the stenosis. No, no, no. You, you, uh, the echocardiogram just shows the apical bone chamber view. It does not show any thickening of myeloma. You <coughs> say it is 1.25 orifice. Either you must have done by pressure of time or you must have taken that in the tip of the mitral valve in the short axis view. I don't see any of those things. This is I don't see the MO view at all. You have shown only one view, that is typical four chapter view. If you show the picture again, I can say that the RA is more enlarged than the LA. Why would the RA be enlarged more than the LA when the patient has no primary hypertension? Sir, sir. You'll see the picture again. Yeah, you can see the picture. I am not a cardiologist. I am not. No, please listen to me. I am not competent to give opinion on the echo cry. The echo was done in one of the reputed hospitals and has been given by another cardiologist. I know two cardiologists may not agree. No, sir. You just show the picture. No, you just go for the picture. You should get a clear opinion. Maybe we have projected one of the pictures. There are so many pictures are there. You are seeing only one of it. No, no. You have got some more pictures? No, we are not uploaded the other pictures. <coughs> now, if you look at the picture, look at the size of the left ATM, look at the size of the right ATM. Obviously, the right ATM is more enlarged than the left ATM. And the so called calcification is confined only to the mitral annulus. The tip is totally free. This is off axis, it is not fully open. It is not a full end diastole. In end diastole, you can see the mitral valve totally open. It is the AML that don'ts, not the PML. PML will go nicely quiet to the posterior wall of the left ventricle. You are saying, So this is not a complete diastole. This is not an end diastole. I'm sorry, I cannot accept this picture as a mitral stenosis picture. Probably we are not projected what are the pictures you want. 
and the calcification extended on to the uh, the papillary muscle and cardiac tendine it will shorten the cardiac tendine shortening of the cardiac tendine will prevent it effectively closing the mitral valve it will keep it open it is a mitral regurgitation with mitral anal calcification not mitral stenosis the purpose of our presentation is sir it really opened our eyes for science always thank you for the both both the uh, presenters thank you very much for you and thank you sir professor krishnan for the to put our uh, the scientific base of your presentation here